And some days when it's like super gray, that might be the tiniest shift of light from that like dark sky, gray, blue, to then a lighter blue, to then just like kind of that yucky gray. And even just seeing that light shift to me is like, ah, like it, it feels like candy for my eyes. And I feel that energy like go into my body and I just feel way more connected to the world. I feel the fresh air on my skin. I feel the elements on my skin. I feel alive and connected to, to time. This episode of Grounded in Maine is sponsored by ESG Review. ESG Review magazine is published quarterly in February, May, August, and November, and is available for free in print and digital formats. ESG Review is devoted to environmental, social, and governance strategies, technologies, and investments. ESGReview.net is updated every Wednesday with eight new stories and is home to feature articles, news, items, and more. Visit ESGReview.net to stay informed and help us spark the collaboration and awareness needed to develop sustainable economies and communities around the world. There's a place where there's no trouble, no more pain, no more struggle. Grounded in Maine podcast is an open conversation about how we show up for the world. I started this podcast out of a desire to learn new ways to be sustainable because the word sustainability is big. It can be overwhelming and I just wanted to learn, you know, different ways to try to be part of the solution and not feel like it's too late. So I'm talking to people who are doing different things and learning so much. I hope you are too. Hi there. Thank you so much for listening to Grounded in Maine today. My name is Amy Fagan and my guest today is Wade Brill. Wade is a podcaster. She has, what, how long? She said 2018, I think. 2018 she started her podcast she's been podcasting for a while and uh she is in seattle and uh she's super cool we had a great time uh we met in a podcast workshop that i i want to say we were in the same workshop a couple of times and just since then we've just been supporting each other on on instagram and uh she's just she has such great posts. Uh, I just I just love everything she's doing. And uh, she had this great idea to do a podcast swap. So we've had uh, the day that we recorded, we'd recorded both together. So she interviewed me and I interviewed her. And it was so great to get to know her better. Uh, because in a workshop, you can only do so much. I thought it was really fun. She has had, she's had some really big stuff in her life. And I think that she's centered we can say centered because her podcast is called centered in the city and uh so her podcast is is mostly about like uh mindfulness and uh she has a whole like website that she uh revolves around being centered and so it's going you know she talks about food and um, mindfulness of course and like dancing and you know all kinds of stuff it's it's really really cool it's but um I hope you guys enjoy this uh please definitely check out the show notes and get her links and I hope you enjoy her conversation and I hope you guys have a great week thank you so much for listening Today, my guest is Wade Brill. Wade and I met in a podcasting group called One Stone Creative with Megan Doherty. Shout out, Megan. Woo woo. <laughs> also a guest on my podcast the last year. Um, we love Megan and uh, Wade and I met in her group and just kind of vibed and we have um, we have very similar podcast titles ish or kind of um, yeah, ish. And uh so we are we're playing today. We're doing a we're doing a um twofer. So Wade, thanks so much for hanging out and uh for this great idea. It's super fun. 
I'm so excited. It's back to back podcasting. I love it. We're doing the, um, the, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, batching almost <laughs> batching. Yeah. We are being time efficient. We are, we are, that is us. Uh, <laughs> and so Wade lives in, you said in Seattle, Seattle. close Pacific Northwest. Northwest. Okay. Yes. And, uh, Wade's podcast is called centered in the city and it is about, tell us about centered in the city, please. Yeah. So centered in the city is a podcast I created in 2017 that originally was a place for meditations where I could share my meditations and, and make them accessible for people. And during the pandemic, it expanded to having these conversations with friends, individuals, thought leaders, authors, creatives around what does it mean to be centered as we live our lives in these cities and city meaning literal city, but also a figurative city of these busy modern lives where we're just running at hyper speeds and we're hyper connected and how do we find our center when things are really loud? So it's all about how do we connect back to self? How do we find our center in our personal and professional life? 2017. Holy crap, man. <laughs> yeah. Long time. I'm like, what year is it? <laughs> You're seven? I guess so. <laughs> Wow. That's amazing. Uh, and so, wow. Uh, but so Wade, you had some sustainability things that you wanted to chat about. So one is managing your energy, which boy, do we need that because we're always just like, go, go, go and burning the candle at both ends. Right. So what do you suggest for that? Yeah. I mean, Big, big question, big topic. When we think about energy management, you know, I think it comes from many different levels and, and perspectives. But when we're energy conscious, when we're thinking about life, everything has an energetic vibration. And you can think that's woo woo, but it's really not. It's kind of physics. Like everything has that sense of, um, energy and impact and, and vibration. And so that even is connected to our thoughts and our emotions. And so when we're conscious of the energy that we create internally, our thoughts and our emotions and our sensations, and then also what's the energy that we create externally, what do we do with our, with our actions, with our bodies? How do we be in the world and interact in the world? And all that has, you know, an energetic impact and we can be conscious to what energy are we cultivating internally and externally, or we can live these unconscious autopilot earmuff blinder life where we're just kind of moving or plowing through. And when we can be conscious of what energy we're creating for ourselves, it can then really affect how we show up in life. It can affect our health. It can affect our well-being. It can affect our relationships. So, um, yeah, I love talking about energy because it is part of being sustainable in this world that is constantly saying, go, go, go faster, faster now, now, now I want it like this. I want it like that. Be more productive, get more done. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, I would think that <clears throat> I mean, what we were just saying on your podcast, uh, talking about uh, taking a moment to find the awe and, you know, that's, it's got to be a good, uh, a good thing to do for the, this uh, energy managing. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> yeah. Like finding the awe is a really helpful way for us to gather energy, connect to energy, and also give energy out. And so for instance, I have this practice right now. It's actually dwindling as the season's starting to shift into to spring, but this is like a winter practice that I've done for the last four years, started in the pandemic. And it's literally life-saving for my mental health around 
the w- winter blues and navigating energy. I'm somebody who needs a lot of light. I I need like sun is like what I pray to, <laughs> you know, like I love the sun. And in the winter, especially here in Seattle and Pacific Northwest, it's really dark. It's It gets really gray. And I have this practice called sunrise chasing that I get up and out the door to catch the beginning glimmers of the sunlight. And some days when it's like super gray, that might be the tiniest shift of light from that like dark sky, gray, blue, to then a lighter blue, to then just like kind of that yucky gray. And even just seeing that light shift to me is like, ah, like it, it feels like candy for my eyes. And I feel that energy like go into my body and I just feel way more connected to the world. I feel the fresh air on my skin. I feel the elements on my skin. I feel alive and connected to, to time. And then that fills my body up with energy. And then I'm bringing that energy into my interaction as I go back home with my husband or my clients when I'm having coaching calls. And I feel just way more connected. And then especially when it's like a drop dead gorgeous sunrise, it's like, holy shit, this world is a miracle. And I actually notice as I'm starting to to not do it as much as the season's shifting, it's become kind of like dopamine. Like I'm like sad I'm not doing it. I'm like, oh, I'm missing out on the sunrise. Like, you know, having now a little FOMO for it. Um, But it gives me, and it also creates this like wonder, childhood wonder of like, oh, what's the sunrise going to be? Because every day it's different. Mm -hmm. And so there's that curiosity and I just get excited to get out the door. So anyway, that's a practice that has created a lot of energy for me during the winter and connects me to awe, connects me to the beauty and simplicity of nature. Wow. Your description of that Wade sound, it, it, like I could feel it. I could feel it. Like it was like, I could, it was like shimmering, like rain was like shimmering down. I could, it was, it was almost like glitter. That was really I love that. I'm glad I, you could feel it. See, that's energy there, right? You could feel those sensations. That was a really good description. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and that sounds like a really good practice. I mean, that's not that outrageous. <laughs> and no, I mean, espe- especially in the winter months when, I mean, you live up pretty north too, like. The sun isn't rising at 6 a.m. where you have to get up at a ridiculous hour to get out the door. I am noticing as the sun is now rising at like 6.57, I'm like, that's a little too early. Even though I'm getting up still around 6, 6.30, like I have some practices that I like to do before I get outside. So I'm just noticing like, okay, this is my winter, my winter ritual. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we watch the sunrise from the breakfast table through the window. That's but, great though. Even taking that moment to like pause and connect to it. I mean, we do it. We watch the birds in the morning because they're right outside the window. And yeah, we we do a lot of the nature stuff here. <laughs> but so that's really great. I mean, to it's like keeping yourself in check. Like, you know, you can go, 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 go. But if you, if you keep that in check and just stop yourself every so often and just like, like reassess or. Yeah. And, and to circling this back to this energy management piece, you know, a lot of the times we do just have our foot on the gas pedal and we're going and we don't think of ourselves, our mind, our body, our, our emotional body, our spiritual body as a car vehicle that like needs it's oil checked and it needs to it's gas to be refilled and it needs you know it's brakes to be tightened and it needs to be cleaned and right like we forget of the maintenance that our systems require and i think we've gotten so accustomed to seeing ourselves 
like technology, like the computers in front of us, like they run all the time. They have 15 tabs open. I don't know about you, but my computer does like, oh, that's, that's how my mind should be and my body should be. And we start to kind of train ourselves to be a little machine and we forget that it's so, it's taking us away from actually our nature. It's taking us away from our own natural rhythms. And obviously thanks to capitalism, you know, it's kind of pushing us into how can we be an efficiency puzzle piece in this whole system. And that has its own issues. And so, you know, okay, where can we take personal responsibility? Yes, we can work to change the larger system. And we have the individual personal responsibility to be caring for self and each other. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a whole separate conversation. <laughs> yes. That's a whole, yeah. Whole other thing. Right. Uh, and so another thing that you have recently done, you said that you sold your car. That's a big deal. And you're not in New York city, but you are in Seattle. Correct. So I'm a born and raised New Yorker who didn't get her license until I was 19. And I've never really owned a car until um, my husband and I got, and he his own cars. We had a car, but then anyway, we owned a car together um, like three years ago during the pandemic, we got one and I really was then learning to drive and feel comfortable parking by myself and going on bridges and highways. And so like, this is, you know, as a 30 plus year old, <laughs> I won't reveal my full age, you know, this was like a new skill I was flexing, very stretchy for me. However, we decided to get rid of our car for various reasons um, and thought we would maybe get a another car, but we were traveling for six weeks. And so we we're like, okay, let's get rid of our cars so we don't have to deal with it while we're gone. And while we were gone, we were in Europe where we spent a lot of time in Amsterdam where they were biking everywhere. And we're big bikers, walkers, public transportation people. And I remember my world just opened to like how possible it is. It's just about training your mindset. And I would see like we were biking around one day and it was pouring rain. And I was like, this is miserable. And about half an hour into it, I had this mindset switch of like, you know what? I'm wet who cares? Like I'm wet. It's a little uncomfortable, but like, who cares? And I'd see everybody else around me, all these Dutch faces, like smiling, living it. So just wet. do, would you say? They're all so wet. Yeah, exactly. And they're just like, they're living it. And they're these little kids, you know, two years old, sitting on the front of these bikes, just like handling it, you know, whereas I would think of a kid in the States, they would probably be like crying and, you know, cause they're just conditioned to being super comfortable all the time. And I, when we got back, I just was like, let's try to just use our bikes because we both work from home. We weren't really using our car that much. Yes. It's great for convenience. And I just said, you know what, let's tap into our Europeanness and we just use this as a mindset. And it's been really fun so far. You know, Seattle, like we've biked in the rain. Seattle's hilly. It's not necessarily the easiest place to bike. But it's created this connection to the elements and the environment that has actually given me so so much energy. It's made me feel alive. It's made me feel like more gratitude for even the weather when it's not that great. And it's been fun. It feels like an adventure traveling from A to B. You're bringing a little bit of Europe to Seattle. Yeah, you know, class of classing it up. Feel maybe people will follow your lead. That'd be fun. Do you have um, public transport? Yeah, Seattle. I mean, Seattle. There's a lot of bikers. You know, we're, we're this is a big city that um, is pretty environmentally conscious. A lot of people even have like electric bikes. Um. Seattle does have transportation as a New Yorker. I can be a little critical of their transportation just because New York City's 
transportation is amazing. You know, you can get anywhere in 15, 20 minutes. Seattle, it's slow to get there, but it does have a light rail. It does have a bus system. It's not the most safe. Like there are a lot of mentally um, ill and stable people who ride the buses and trains and who aren't paying for it and sometimes are doing drugs on them. And, you know, it just doesn't necessarily make people feel comfortable or safe, um, myself included in that. And to be honest, that's why I enjoy walking more places because it takes about 15 minutes longer for me to walk someplace and get my steps in. And I'm not necessarily having to deal with that. Heard. Okay, cool. Um, I, I wish that um, my area was a little bit better that way. We have a bus that doesn't run a lot. Um, yeah, it takes like a lot of, of organization to, to time public transportation if it's not in a bigger metropolitan city. Yeah, and like where I am, it's not really a safe ride bike wise to get there. I mean, it's, it's a six minute drive, It'd probably be close to half hour, maybe bike ride. I don't know. I don't ride bikes, but, um, just to get to the bus, to get to the bus, um, it would take a lot for me, but, uh, yeah, you're in a, a place in the world that's pretty remote, you know, there's, it's hard. It's even hard in like a city that does have right access to these things and it does take more planning. Yeah. I just only drive twice. I only go up twice. Um that's that's my uh justification. <laughs> uh but I love that. I mean that's I think that I think that would be cool to to see to like be a fly on the wall sort of like so to speak to see if people are like oh that looks kind of like they're enjoying that i wonder if i might enjoy that maybe i should bike it's, it's, it, the energy you bring into it, it's contagious you know i've even started to if we're biking to dinner to meet friends or something i put on lipstick and i'm like i'm going to be a cute biker you know, I'm I'm not just going to feel schlumpy biking, even though I'm going to get sweaty because of these hills. I am going to look cute or have a change of outfit when I arrive or, you know, do something that makes it actually fit into my lifestyle. Awesome. Good for you. <clears throat> do you have a um, do you have a big granny seat on your bike or no? No. No. What's a granny seat? Big fat bike seat for your butt. Mm, no, I have, um, I don't know, pretty standard one. You know, when I haven't biked in a while and then I bike, I'm always like, oh yeah, that's what the biking soreness feels like. <laughs> I will say in Amsterdam, you know, they have a lot of bike stores and we walked into one that showed us there's this like bike that's just a, um, a bike seat that's just circular for women so that they can wear skirts while they bike hmm. and that the skirt you know isn't getting like okay. spread well, open why yeah and i was like interesting and supposedly it's like a french design so there's a whole world of biking apparatus that is out there that i don't even know you know that we don't even know is i think americans i would not even dream of wearing a skirt to bike but I mean, people in Amsterdam, I was struck. People were wearing heels while biking. Like they, you know, are wearing suits. Like it is just a, and again, very different system and they where do it all it's time. flat. Yeah. Yeah. They do it all the time. So they, they have to wear what they're wearing. But it, it, it proves, you know, it's like when you grow up doing something or you're accustomed to it and it's around you, it becomes it becomes the thing. Like it's not this outlandish act. That's awesome. I love it. I mean, I did, we, we biked in, um, we biked in Charleston. We rode those, um, what do they call the beach cruisers? 
that was not awful. I didn't hate that. It's the I think it's like the mountain bikes with the all the gears and stuff that I don't like. It's also the like click 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 that's like miserable. But mm. and maybe handbrakes. <laughs> maybe it's me being uncoordinated. <laughs> I like the hand brakes. I don't like the back pedal brake. That to me is a whole other thing. But, um, you know, you do you. That's why they have different styles. <laughs> I just want to be where it's flat and I want a big fat seat. So don't hurt my bum. Hang out for just a quick moment for an ad break. Are you struggling to manage your personal finances on top of everything else? Say hello to Coach Connor. Get tailored support to finally conquer the financial stress. It's time to take control and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Reach out to Coach Connor at Progress Solutions now and start your transformation. See the link in the show notes for how to reach Coach Connor. Let's see. So you taught you told us about your your winter practice, but what do you do? What kind of um what kind of practices do you do in the spring or the summer? Like, is it very different or do you have like, is it mostly energy or is it, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, you know, energy is, is something that I just like to be conscious of from like what food am I feeding myself? Knowing that if there's like a day that I'm going and eating thing like no vegetables, I will feel that like I will feel the the impact of of that on my mind and my body and one of the reasons you know I love cooking with color is not only because it's really good for you and you're getting a whole bunch of nutrients with with the diversity of color but I feel like I can feel the energy of the different the the chi of the different fruits and vegetables in my system. And so I pay attention to what do I feed myself? And let's be clear, like I still like my pastries, my croissants, my chocolate, like that all has energy in it too. And, and that's a balance, you know, of figuring and paying attention to when, when my body's wanting what, um, my other practices that, are really helpful for me to just even notice and gain awareness of what's happening internally and externally is my meditation practice. And I've had a consistent meditation practice for a long time. Um, since, since I was, um, it's about 21 and I have obviously had phases where I've dipped out of it, but having a morning meditation practice is like this thing that gets me grounded. It helps me feel connected to myself. It helps me build awareness of like what's happening in my mind and my body and my emotional body. And it helps me also get some space from some of the stories or the things that are feeling really congested or all encompassing. It helps me create a little bit of more space so I can understand, you know, what's mine and what's not mine. Um, I'm somebody who's very sensitive to things and people and energy. And, and so just even being conscious of like, Again, what's here? What's here for me to pay attention to? What's here for me to be mindful of? Um, And then I have other practices like journaling and Pilates and walks that I do no matter the season um, and almost every day, if not every other day. And those are just really staples that help me connect to my body, help me connect to my inner strength, help me connect to my inner voice. Um, and yeah, those are some of my, my favorite practices as we're heading into spring. And I would say fall too. I love this, but I love walking, taking walks, these mindful walks and paying attention to the leaves, the trees, the buds, and just 
finding that nat- nature rhythm, like that natural rhythm that is around us. And that is life giving, especially even like the season as we're coming out of winter really slowly, like starting to see the greens of like the daffodils pop up, starting to see the rosebuds, starting to see like even our la- uh, lilac tree is like starting to get really tiny green buds. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, just so paying attention to that or in the fall, slowing down and really looking at the leaves starting to change and the color of the sun being a little bit warmer as it gets lower. And just noticing all of those shifts are really powerful ways for me to become more present and um, connected to self and, and to the greater world around me. Awesome. <clears throat> Very cool. And so, I mean, on that, to, to that point, I mean, when I'm, that just kind of brings me to the message that you wanted to, uh, that pe- you wanted people to leave with was you were saying um, to just like to slow down and pay attention to, you said paying attention is, is key to feeling centered in a loud world and boy, is the world loud. Um, I totally feel that. But, um, but so, I mean, your practices, it sounds like that's totally what you're doing. You're just like centering yourself. You're just slowing yourself down to be, to just be more aware of your own voice and your own self and stop listening to everything outside. Yeah. Um, thank you for articulating in that way. It was, it's helpful for me to even hear, you know, um, yes, like our world is so loud, whether you live in a city are on social media, your work environment, your friends, your family, neighbors, right? Like we just have so much, so many voices that we're constantly hearing and, it can be really easy to let those voices kind of sweep us out of our own bodies, out of our own minds, disconnect us from our own needs. And these centering practices, the intention behind them is to, yeah, bring us to the present moment to connect us inward so we can live more intentionally outwards. Um, and I was sitting actually in my meditation practice the other day and I was listening to myself and I got this like whisper of like slow down and I was like what I feel like I'm going pretty slow like what's you know like what what are you talking about you know and I was sat with this question and was trying to like understand it and 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 be curious with it and I realized sometimes it's not just like, what am I doing and what am I scheduling in my life? Like how busy am I making myself on that outside? But it was also like, what's the pace at which I'm talking to myself and putting pressure on myself and putting projects or things I need to do or um, should statements on myself or scheduling like wheels turning of planning things, but not necessarily on the calendar. And so it was a reminder of, to myself of like, oh yeah, I get to like internally slow down too, just as much as externally. And Mm. when I can slow down on that internal pace, I realize how much more my anxiety softens. I realize how I am able to operate on more of a, I'm able to flow a little bit more and like trust life versus be in this place of needing to constantly do or control or manipulate. Mm -hmm. And that is like new for me. Trust has been something really, um, I've been on a journey with of, of building and learning how to like, again, just pay attention to the operating system um, 
it's really important. Like, where am I trying to take action from? Am I taking action from fear and anxiety and what I don't want? Or am I taking action from what I do want and, and from a place of calm and connection and capacity? And so paying attention to all those things, um, in, in order to pay attention, yeah, you got to slow down. You got to listen. You got to be present. Wow. That's, that's kind of intense. I mean, to think about slowing down the inside, like I get the, the thoughts go really fast, but just like how you're, that just sounds, just sounds like a lot, but, um, sounds, I mean, so the way you were talking about, um, the, you know, how controlling everything, it sounds like almost like, um, you were like on the defense, like everything is coming at you and you have to like defend but so you're just like letting it come, just like trusting. That sounds hard. That sounds hard. Like how do you do that? I have been trying to practice this for a really long time. And I think a lot of my default comes from, I actually was just writing about this um, this morning. So I feel like this is very present for me of, I feel like a lot of my patterning growing up in the city and this like hyperactive, hyper achieving productivity, you know, New York is like time is money, money is time, pace is just so built into my nervous system. And also, you know, I've had some real life shit happen to me where um, I was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 21 and at the same time. I lost my mom to her own battle of cancer. And that point of life was really this rupture for me, as one can imagine, of how precious life is and our time and our energy and our attention and what we put in our body, right? Just this whole awakening of, wow, I have choice in my life and wanting to be intentional. And that, you know, trauma in my life really went deep from a place of like, okay, only then the good things can come into my, right? So it was kind of like, I put that block out there of like, like very, just like very discerning what's, what's going to enter my space because only something that's good, you know, this is sacred. And so it was such a practice to, it's been a practice to learn how to receive and like trust that good things can come in without, as you said, being on the defense, without putting up that wall. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a process, you know, that's awesome. Good for you. That's has to be, that's a long time coming. I mean, that's not like overnight for sure. No, I don't yet have a, do these 10 steps and you'll trust. (laughs) I'd say the biggest thing that, that if somebody is interested in exploring trust is just to even start to get clear on like, what does trust feel like? And how can you just even connect to more of that felt sensation from a somatic place more often? And so for me, trust felt like laying in a hammock. It was like this ability to like rest back, be held, feel this gentle breeze, feel kind of like cozy, be able to look at the beautiful sky. And that has been what I've been practicing within my body um, for the last many years. That sounds pretty awesome. I mean, that's a, that's a good practice. I mean, just to keep that feeling close and keep yeah wow Wow. very cool good for you thanks I want that (laughs) I want that um but so I mean I want that for you too (laughs) wait this has been amazing like I love getting to know you better and uh and get to know your practices better like I it's really cool um but so what, what does the word sustainability mean to you? Mm. Mm. 
sustainability means being conscious of how, what I'm expending. And so maybe put in some other words, like it's being conscious of like when, when to speed up, when to slow down, when to, you know, when to, how do I want to be like managing? Like, how do I just want to be like conscious of, of the actions that are happening? So in terms of even like sustainability on this larger scale of environmental sustainability, you know, it's just even thinking about how am I being conscious of, again, like what energy is being consumed from my vegetables being raised by farmers and the the miles they've traveled to the hands like that are picking it to, um, to recognizing again, like what is, what's being, um, what's the word I'm looking for discarded and how's that being processed into the universe. So it's just this like, kind of like, what's the word I'm also looking for this. Um, what's that symbol that goes like this infinity, infinity. Thank you. Like that flow of like in and out what's happening in and out is um, how I define sustainability. That's really cool. That is, that is different than I have heard before, but I love that because it's, it's so true. I mean, it is, it's going back into the earth and it's going to become something else. And, you know, and everything, everything works like that. I do really like that. And I love that. I love that you're talking about energy with that as well, because it is, you know, that's, that's your jam. But, um, and so if somebody is interested in learning more about your practices or follow, you know, what, uh, centered in the city is up to and learn more about that, um, how can someone find you? Yeah. So if somebody is looking to work with me one-on-one, I offer one-on-one coaching and a lot of that is for driven, ambitious, people who are wanting to build more sustainability in their life, more, more, um, not just centering practices, but ways that they can, um, go after what they want, but also staying connected to their authentic self and and voice without losing their, their sense of self. And, um, I also then have, my Center of the City podcast, which would love for listeners to join in on. And with that, I have a centeredincity.com platform, which is a whole bunch of like over 200 different holistic mindfulness resources and practices that people can check out and play with from mindful cooking and mindful eating recipes to meditations, to Pilates flows, to journaling prompts everything there is designed to help people come back to their center, to take that time to pause and think about how do they want to feel and, and be in this world. Awesome. That sounds like everything that anyone needs. <laughs> I hope so. You know, during the, pa- it was birth during the pandemic. Cause I was like, I was hearing people like YouTube th- for this and go to Instagram for this. And, t- and I just like, I just want People have this centered space where they can just go in and like take a deep breath and come back to themselves. Right. So that's centeredthecity.com if you want to check it out um, or join me on Instagram at one Wade. Very cool. And I will have links in the show notes, folks. But um, Wade, thank you so much. I appreciate this, this journey. This is amazing. And um, I appreciate your time so much. Thanks, Amy. Thanks for having me on. It's fun to be a guest. I just want to take a second to thank my guest again for for speaking with me and sharing such great information. I love having these conversations with folks. Uh, I also want to thank Buzzsprout for hosting the podcast, for Jane Bolduck and her music genius, for Becca Coffron and her award-winning artwork. 
And thank you for listening. I appreciate that so much. Uh, please check out the show notes for any links and extra information. Uh, and uh, if you would like to follow my guest and uh, find out more about them, I'm sure they would love the the follow. Um, and if you would, if you don't mind leaving a rating or review wherever you're listening, uh, and just help to get this podcast in front of new eyes. That would be amazing. I would really love that. And uh, feel free to reach out to me on the socials and uh, let me know what you're thinking. And if you would like to be a guest on the podcast, please let me know that. I would love to have a conversation with you about sustainability. All right. Uh, Thank you again. I hope you have a great rest of the week. There'll come a day My mama told me when I find love to have and hold me a heart that's strong and so sincere just tell me how do I get there from here oh tell me Tears and wonder.